Hello and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company Accounting Lesson. In this video, we will be going over a common size analysis, also known as a vertical analysis for a balance sheet. In our other video, we did a common size analysis for an income statement. I'll be sure to link to that in the description. All right, so when we're doing a vertical analysis for a balance sheet, remember our focus is on up and down. So we are going to find out how much each line item is as a percentage of another line item. When we were doing the income statement, we did everything as a percentage of revenues. For a balance sheet though, it's a little different and it kind of depends on what you are looking at on the balance sheet. So for example here, uh, let's just focus on this area right here, our assets. Our assets are going to be shown as a percentage of total assets. So let's start just by doing the uh, total assets for this one right here. So I want to know how much this line item is as a percentage of this line item right here. So we see that our cash makes up 1.78% of the total assets value. And it's kind of nice, this vertical analysis, because it gives us a breakdown of essentially um, how much of our total assets each line item is eating up. So um, let's go ahead. I want to uh, take this formula and I want to, instead of you know doing it one by one, you know that takes a little while, um, we're going to go ahead and keep this consistent. Um, I want this to stay fixed uh, for the denominator in row 55. So I'm going to give it an absolute so that as I drag this down, it'll drag the new numerator, but it won't move that row. All right, let's grab our fill handle. Drag it down, delete that zero. All right, there we go. So now as you can see, uh, we can kind of more better envision what the breakdown of this 8.45 million is. Um, we have current assets here. We see that our total current assets uh, make up about 13.61% of our total balance. It's really our PPE that's eating up the most, 66.27%. So it gives our business owners a better idea about what the breakdown is of these uh, particular numbers. And as always, please make sure that you're using those math lines. Um, we usually try to stay consistent with what we're seeing within the line items on the actual statement with our ratios as well. So let's just put those in real quick. All right, we're actually going to be doing something similar to our 20x1 year, our prior year. Uh, the one thing I do have to make sure that's good, but this one, beautiful. All right, so as you can see, everything is showing every single line item as it relates to the total assets amount there. Uh, let's go ahead and do this bottom part. Um, our next section is liabilities, and then we also have stockholders equity here. Now notice, uh, and you might remember on your balance sheet, you might be seeing it as a statement of financial position, but on your balance sheet, keep in mind we have our basic accounting equation, assets equals liabilities and equity, so those two numbers should equal. So what I'm about to do here might not, um, you might kind of say, well, I could have just used total assets as my total, but technically that's not what they're trying to show. So just so I can kind of um, give you an example. Uh, let's go ahead and put in our formula. Uh, we have accounts payable, so that's going to be our numerator and then total liabilities and equity in our denominator. And that's going to make up the entirety. I know um, I always kind of get this question, um, can I just use total assets? Technically, yes. But if we were reading from your textbook, it would be telling you that every liability and equity account is using total liabilities and equity as the denominator. So just trying to stay consistent. I know I've seen it. I'm aware. But um, technically, you are using those amounts as your denominator. Uh, let's go ahead, get rid of those zeros. And then let's also put in some of our total lines. All 
All right. And now let's copy that formula over to our prior year so we can do the same type of analysis. And as always, go ahead and check your work and make sure that everything came out perfect. Okay. So you can kind of see here, um, if you were someone who is using this tool to make decisions, you'd notice, okay, so before cash made up, a, or sorry, not cash, that's accounts payable. Accounts payable made up a little bit more of my total amount. Um, I'm seeing a little bit of a decline on some of my liabilities. So there's a little bit of a switch about where these percentages lie and how much of the total they're eating up. Okay. So now that we have done a common size analysis, we're going to move on to the rate of change analysis for an income statement and a balance sheet as well. I'll make sure to link to those in the description. Thank you so much and happy studying.